Hi there, this is SynthChaser from SynthChaser.com. A couple of weeks ago, I had someone in Europe ask me if I sold anything to convert an ARP synthesizer over from North American 120 volts to European 240 volts. ARP actually took into account that many of their synth users would be touring around with these, and they actually made them with transformers that support both 120 and 240 volts. However, they didn't put a nice little switch on the back to switch between these two modes, as you'd find in many modern electronics. As it turns out, I just sold this very lovely ARP Omni 1 to someone in the UK, so I figured that this would be a perfect opportunity to show you how to convert an ARP from 120 to 240 volts, or back from 240 volts to 120 volts. Messing with mains level wiring can have dangerous results. The information presented in this video is for entertainment purposes only. When you do anything you see me doing in this or any of my other videos, you're doing so at your own risk. Before we do anything, we need to completely unplug the synthesizer. Not just turn it off, but completely unplug it. Uh, we're going to be poking around in the wiring ahead of the power switch, and if the synthesizer is still plugged in, that would be bad, okay? To change the operating voltage, you need to open up the synthesizer. So I've got this open now, and we can have a look around inside of the power supply. We can see the power cord comes in the case through here. Uh, there's some wires coming from the power cord. Uh, there's some wires going up to this power switch. And on the power supply board, there's a few quick connect terminals. Some earlier ARPs don't have the quick connect terminals, but uh, most from 1975 or 1976 onward do, and that's the kind that we've got here. So we've got this mains power cord with its three wires coming in. We've got four quick connect terminals, a fuse tucked back here, and three wires coming in here onto the primary side of the transformer. Rather than just telling you what wire to move, to, to change the voltage over. I'm going to explain what's going on here because if you understand what's going on you'll be less likely to mess stuff up and you'll be more likely to stay safe when you're working on your synthesizer. Alright, so the power cord has three wires coming in. There's black here, which is hot, white, which is neutral, and green, which is earth ground. If the power cord's been replaced, the colors could be different and some ARPs have an IEC jack instead of a hardwired power cord. But let's start by uh, following each of these wires, starting with the hot, the black one. So hot from the power cord comes to this first quick connect terminal in the back. I'll move these so you can see. So there's two piggybacked um, black wires on that quick connect terminal. Uh, the terminal itself isn't connected to anything on the circuit board. It's just there to provide a secure place to piggyback that other black wire to it. If we follow this second black wire here, we follow it up, the black wire comes into the power switch. And the switch is just a mechanical switch. And unfortunately, the other side of the wire uh, coming out of the switch is, uh, is white, uh, which is confusing because white is typically reserved for the neutral wire. And when this switch is turned on, we have a hot wire that's colored white and that could make someone's day very, very bad. Anyway, this hot white wire comes out of the switch and comes down to the third quick connect terminal. On this circuit board, this then goes through the fuse. This then goes through the fuse and up this, again now, black wire into the primary side of the transformer. Next up, we've got the white neutral wire from the power cord. This wire comes over here to this second terminal, second quick connect terminal, where it's piggybacked to this red wire. The red wire goes up and comes in here on the power switch. The power switch is illuminated with a little lamp and a series resistor, and this red wire serves as the return for that illumination. Without a return path, no current can flow in a circuit. So this actually brings us to an interesting point. All the time I see people selling ARPs saying, you know, something like, powers on but unable to test it, or powers on but no output. But basically, we just saw that this light on the power switch is pretty much meaningless. It's ahead of the power supply, it's ahead of the transformer, and it's even ahead of the fuse. So saying that the synth powers on because the power lamp turns on is a great mistake. 
Anyway, getting back on track, the, the neutral here is connected to something on the circuit board. You can see that trace kind of go under the fuse, and it's connected to this white wire, which comes into the primary side of the transformer. Finally, this green wire here is connected to the metal chassis of the synthesizer. And that's pretty much the wiring for the standard 120 volt operation. So if you're looking at your synthesizer and the ground pin of your power cord's been removed, or if the power cord is frayed, if the strain relief bushing here that holds the cord in place to the chassis is missing, or if the wiring in here looks different or sloppier than what's here, then be afraid. This is not an area you want shoddy work in. All right, so let's now discuss the 240 volt operation. So ARP figured that their users would be touring all over the world and would need to switch between 120 and 240 volts. So they used a transformer with a dual primary winding that could support both 120 and 240 volts. However, they also figured that everyone would be touring with their keyboard technicians, so they thought it would be fine to make their users open up the synths to switch the voltages. So that's where this fourth terminal on the power supply comes into play. For 240 volt operation, this terminal is used for the neutral, and it's connected to this blue wire, faded blue wire, on the transformer. So with this explanation, it's trivial to see that to convert the, the unit from 120 to 240 volts, all we have to do is move this, this uh, white wire, the neutral wire, uh, over from the second terminal to the fourth terminal. So you may have noticed that I also moved over the red wire, the neutral, for the illumination on the rocker switch. And that's okay. The original switch that came on these, uh, which this one is original, is rated both for 125 and 250 volts AC. So, uh, so this rocker switch will work when you switch it over. Just verify what's stamped on the side of the, uh, the switch housing to make sure that no one's replaced that switch with the lower rated switch. But now the synth is configured for 240 volt operation. Conversely, if you pick up an ARP that's configured for 240 volts, you now know what to do to convert it back to 120 volts. Later ARPs were designed to be easier to open than this one, so switching back and forth between voltages would have been less of a chore than on this Omni-1. I'll flash the schematic for the power wiring really quickly. This is found in all the ARP service manuals, which are easy to find on the web. Hopefully this information helps someone, but remember to be safe with mains level wiring. If you mess up, it would be a shocking surprise. I want to thank everyone who subscribed to my channel, and if you've not done so already, please subscribe with a little button that should have just showed up. This has been Synth Chaser from SynthChaser.com. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.